Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome if it's your first time. In today's video, I'm reviewing the Soundpeats Space Bluetooth headphones. Let's get it. What's cracking audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. So the Soundpeats Space, this is, I think, I think they might have done a head full-size headphone before, but they are known mostly for their TWS earbuds. And if you are familiar with my channel, you might know that I'm a bit of a Soundpeats fanboy because they just consistently make good products. So I was pretty excited to test out the space here. That's what the box looks like. But let's bring the headphones in and there they are. Now, let me just lay them down that way. Yes, you can lay them flat. They look pretty sweet, don't they? You, the iconic Soundpeats logo there on the ear cups in rose gold. I think uh, these headphones come in three different colors. There's like black, white, and cream. So there's good rotation on the ear cups here. You can lay them flat down like that or uh, lay them around your neck when you're not listening to them. On the top of the headband here, we've got some sort of fabric cover, which is quite unusual, a little bit different. And on the underside, we've got a nice protein leather uh, padding there with some memory foam inside. The ear pads are nice and plush with memory foam in them. Let's flip them over and show you the inside. We do have left and right indicators there or symbols there, so you know you're wearing them the right way. Now these are foldable, so nice and compact for storage. All the right things so far. In the hand, the build quality feels pretty darn good. I mean, remember $79, so budget earphones. They are all plastic, but it's a good quality plastic. They feel good. Nice and durable, there's no creaking. The head, the clamping force is reasonably light, but it is secure enough. I never felt like they were going to fall off while I was using them. Now on the right ear cup is where we find our playback controls. That's the power button and also the play pause button and the volume rocker there on the and the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary port. And on the other side is the single button for A and C and there are three active noise canceling modes. We've got ANC on, ANC off and ambient mode. And I may as well go over the ANC while we're on that topic. And in my experience, the ANC on these, it works really well. It's one of the better ones that I've heard for sub $100 headphones. Engine noise, uh, droning low frequency sounds, fans, air conditioners, things like that. Almost completely cut out. The ANC works very, very well. When it comes to the ambient mode, however, not so great. Um, ambient mode, it does amplify your surroundings, surrounding sounds, but it sounds very thin, it sounds tinny, it just sounds quite unnatural, so the ambient mode is not very good, but the ANC mode, very good. These do come with Bluetooth 5.3, so we've got a nice modern version there. And in terms of battery life, we're talking, this is unreal. With the ANC on, active noise cancelling on, you get up to 65 hours. And that extends to a pretty crazy 123 hours when the ANC is turned off. I kid you not, 123 hours. So class leading battery life, really, really good. And they support fast charging too, so you can get 12 hours of playback from a mere 10 minute fast charge. That is unreal. You'll never have to worry about running out of battery. As with all of the other Soundpeats gear, these do have uh, the Soundpeats app support. And within the app, you've got a bunch of preset EQ modes and you've also got a custom 10 band EQ so you can tweak the sound however you want. It's always a big plus for these Soundpeats products. Now in terms of connectivity, I mentioned their Bluetooth 5.3, but uh, very reliable, pair nice and fast with my uh, Android phone. Never experienced any dropouts or clipping or uh, you know cutting out at all. Excellent. Another thing that really impressed me was the call quality or the microphone quality. Now, there were a couple of other reviews floating around 
where people said that the call quality was really quite poor. I disagree, or well, maybe it's the recent update, the firmware update that I had the other day, but when I did my voice testing, my call testing, they sounded really good, and I'll give you an example of that here. By 6000 BC, Greater Australia is no more. One seventh of its land, about 2.5 million square kilometers, has been drowned by the sea. Tasmania, once a southern peninsula, is now an island whose Aborigines have lost all contact with those on the mainland. So I don't know about you, but I think that sounds pretty good for calls and video conferencing. Now let's get on to the important stuff. Have I covered everything? Yes, pretty much. I didn't mention comfort. These are super comfortable. The ear pads are nice and plush, memory foam, as I said before. And the only thing is your, well, my ears do get a bit warm after a bit of time, but that's pretty much the case for just about any closed back headphone. So let's talk about how they sound. And I would say the Soundpeat Space, smooth as velvet, lush and vibrant. It has a nice juicy bass with deep satisfying tones, bit of sub bass rumble there. The bass bleeds, it does bleed into the mids a little bit in the, well, depending on what your EQ settings are. Like I usually just use the Soundpeats Classic EQ preset. Um, so with that, there is a little bit of bleeding into the mids, but that's, that's fine. It's, it's not, a destructive kind of bleeding it just lends warmth and body to the mid-range but if you find that the bass is too much you can always switch presets or you can adjust it in the customizable eq however for my years i found the bass to be nicely balanced with the rest of the spectrum and not overpowering in the least the mid-range sounds lush but vibrant mid-range notes get warmth and body from the bass but they still produce vibrant and colorful tones and the mid-range is soulful it's emotive it evokes deep feelings and connection whether you're listening to music or watching movies uh, the vocals are nice and forward, so mid-range, pretty nice. And then lastly, for the treble, look, if you are treble sensitive, there's no need for any concern here. As usual with Bluetooth headphones, the treble is pretty rolled off. It is nice and smooth. It's inoffensive, um, non-fatiguing. It's not a sparkly treble, but it has enough energy uh, to, you know, lift the sound and provide some excitement and detail retrieval is pretty on point as well and now in terms of sound stage uh, they're, they're not too bad actually they're quite good uh, i found i find i should say most sound pits products in general have a good sound stage and i'm not sure why that is it's just the just the case and that has carried over into these as well and by the way they, they do have a nice low latency so they are good for gaming as well. Rightio, let's do a little quick comparison now and see if I got enough room here. So this is the final UX2000 headphones and these come in at a price of $119 so they're significantly more expensive. That's like $40 extra on top of the sound piece space. They the material the plastic does feel a little more premium i will say that the sound peats feels it still feels pretty good i gotta i tell you what but the yeah the ux2000 just feels a little bit more a little nicer in terms of materials the headband is padded on top as well as the bottom don't know why but that's just the way it is they are also a little bit heavier than the space but only a little bit and the ear pads are slightly plusher although perhaps let's turn them over perhaps not quite as big so if you've got bigger ears you'll be more at home with the space here now in terms of audio quality the ux2000 here is kind of dominated by the bass it's got this pretty thick and heavy fat bass which is fun but it's also quite destructive it does smear the mid-range a little bit it does obscure some of the finer details in music so 
these do sound pretty good but compared to the space here i think the space actually sounds better and you know not only do they sound better in their default state but you've got that custom eq you've got those eq presets as well so you can really tweak these and in the end they just sound better i mean at this stage the ux the final ux 2000 does not have any app support outside of japan so you can't change the sound profile at all you can't there's no eq or anything there's no app at all so considering the difference in price i would say the sound pete's space is the clear winner out of those two and with that said i think i'm going to wrap it up there so uh, let me know in the comments below what do you think how do you think they look I reckon it looks pretty nice hey um, honestly I'm very very impressed and I'm I'm relieved to say that because you know something different from sound Pete's, I'm always happy with their stuff but I was a little bit concerned that they might not make the transition to full-size headphones gracefully but they have they've done a fantastic job the battery is unreal uh, the ANC is great they sound really good and the build quality and comfort are superb so really unbelievable fully recommend these um, yeah let me know in the comments down below have you heard these what do you think about the look and the design you know just ask a question or say whatever you want really but be nice and with that said, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Parfam audio file style. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button before you go. And until next time, I'll see you later.